This is ICASTnews.com, live and direct from United Nations headquarters in New York City, USA. And this is bubbling under and bubbling over. The world in the last year has become a significantly more unsafe place. Its chances of self-annihilation have greatly increased. And this is official. This comes from the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, some of the most well-educated, well-respected world figures, students of hard science. They have moved their doomsday clock to two and a half minutes towards midnight. The doomsday clock represents symbolically the health of the world, the planet's health and safety. It shows in a time of strident nationalism and loose talk about nuclear weapons that the world is less safe than even a year ago. The people at the, U- at the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, led by Thomas Pickering, Ambassador Pickering, perhaps America's most experienced trusted diplomat, the ambassador to the Soviet Union, to Israel, and here at the United Nations, made the presentation moving the hand of the clock that shows the danger of self-annihilation 30 seconds closer to midnight, the time when, in the clock's ideas, the apocalyptic clock will strike midnight and the world will self-destruct. Largely, this is the 90%, 90% solution problem. 90% of the atomic weapons in the world, Ambassador Pickering indicated, are held by the United States and Russia, and yet their relations are even worse. And there's been loose talk about spreading nuclear weapons to Japan and South Korea. And there has been fake news and a general distrust of fakes. Pakistan and nuclear power responded to fake news about an Israeli nuclear readiness with its own going on to alert and strident nationalism. Ambassador Pickering said, it is now time not to build up, it is time to build down. He asked U.S. and Russian nuclear capabilities to be diminished. Where does this all come from? It all goes back to 1947. In 1947, a group of men who had participated in the Manhattan Project, who had created the world's first atomic bomb, started the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. These were men who could not remain aloof from the consequences of their work. They were led by a remarkable scientist, Eugene Rabinowitz, Rabinowitz was born in Russia in 1901, so he was a child of the Revolution, 16 when the Russian Revolution broke out, came to the United States. And he brought people together to try and get the world to recognize the, and to understand the horrendous realities unleashed by the Manhattan Project when the first bomb in the world, the first atomic bomb, was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. Dropped on Hiroshima, destroying between 80 and 100,000 people instantaneously. And those who survived, the horrific consequences of how they lived, if you call it life, after being struck by atomic bombs, terrified them and got Rabinowitz and his fellow scientists in 1947 to come up on the cover of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists with the clock, saying that the world was seven minutes from destruction, seven minutes from nuclear annihilation, and this was before the Russians got the A-bomb. The very worst year 1953, when 
the clock was moved to two minutes to midnight. This in the very depths of the Cold War, where there was a face-off in Korea between the United States, Communist China, and Communist Soviet Union, when, to the surprise of many, the Soviet Union dropped in a, in a Hiroshima-like bomb of even greater proportion, the super bomb, the H-bomb. This bomb, the hydrogen bomb, was the handiwork of Andrei Dmitrich Sakharov. You can see here, I'm talking to Mr. Sakharov, the great academician. He, too, was horrified with the handicraft work that he laid out, and he went on to become a human rights activist, somebody who wrote about peaceful coexistence between the Soviet Union and the United States and de-escalating the nuclear conflict. Uh, since 1953, the clock has gone never closer than it is this year at two and a half minutes. The clock has moved back. It moved back largely because of some of the work of people who were like thinkers to Sakharov. In 1963, with President Kennedy in power, the clock went back remarkably 17 minutes. 17 minutes, why? Because there were negotiations and an arms control treaty reached between the United States and the Soviet Union, the limited test ban treaty, so there could be less testing and no open air testing. This was the great work of Avril Harriman, America's longtime ambassador and man for all things Soviet, who negotiated with Khrushchev the limited test ban treaty. It should be noted that Avril Harriman started his career in the Soviet Union as a businessman, like the incoming Secretary of State. The negotiations and the idea of arms control of these two superpowers who are bent on mutual destruction meant that progress on controlling atomic weapons could work, but it wasn't perfect. Proliferation of nuclear weapons, other nations, Pakistan, India, Israel, got nuclear weapons. But there was a significant improvement in the health of the world thanks to the end of the Cold War and thanks to the work of two men, Mikhail Gorbachev and George H.W. Bush, who together found a way to reunite Europe, to pull back weapons, to negotiate the withdrawal of nuclear weapons from Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Their good work really made the world a much safer place. But the virtues and the triumphs realized at the end of the Cold War by the wisdom of President Bush the senior and Mikhail Gorbachev, that progress was dissipated. Dissipated particularly when by 2007 there was even more proliferation of nuclear weapons, this time to North Korea. The North Korean nuclear capability is one of the reasons that the clock this year has gone back to two and a half minutes. They tested two nuclear weapons in the last year. They are pushing to have ballistic missile tests. The leadership there is said to be unstable. Three or four American administrations have failed to do anything about North Korea's nuclear ambitions. The Chinese have not acted as they promised to put a lid on North Korea, and they are considered to be wild men. But wild men, too, are said to be loose in other parts of the world. For the first time, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists singled out a single individual, Donald Trump, the new president of the United States, and said his loose words about perhaps spreading nuclear weapons to South Korea, to Japan, for rebuilding and uh, re-upping the American nuclear commitment, scare people who are experts. And they believe that the idea that facts are not being the basis for judgment also makes the world a much 
more difficult place. If we look at the graph that summarizes all of the movement back and forth on the doomsday clock, we can see there's been progress and there's been ret retrenchment, that political movements have in fact had a great influence. The assertion of the two subcontinental powers, Pakistan and India, that each must have a nuclear capability has made the world a less safe place. There has not been a serious new negotiation between the two largest nuclear powers, Russia and the United States, for several years. Thomas Pickering stressed that the powers that account for 90 percent of the world's nuclear weapons must build down, must reduce their weapons. Modernizing is one thing. Each of the two superpowers is doing that. But reducing the stockpile of weapons, reducing the risk of loose nukes, reducing the talk that is loose about nukes, and taking into consideration something that's been recently added to the bulletin's concerns, global warming, environmental concerns. All those things have made this a more dangerous time. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists gives us a relative constant across 70 years of the dangers of the world. The world is a much more dangerous place in the nuclear era, in the era of many nations with nuclear weapons, with an unpredictable, shifty, unreliable, extremist power in North Korea, eager to test its nuclear capabilities, with the Arctic ice cap melting, with strident nationalism, a dominant tone in many countries. And so the people at the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists warn us, we are closer to the apocalypse in 2017 than we have been in any time since the Second World War, save that coldest Cold War year of 1953. The world needs to take note and to do something about the warnings and the shrill but well-measured tone taken by this very indicative measure of the health of the world, the doomsday clock of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. On that quasi-apocalyptic note, this is Bubbling Under and Bubbling Over for ICAST News, live and direct from United Nations headquarters in New York City, USA, a target, perhaps, of nuclear destruction. I'm Jonathan Sanders.